Great, you're here just in time. We've got a lot to build. Yes, build the crypto industry. Wait, wait, what do you mean you don't know what a crypto is? You know, the future of finance? Web 3.0? The metaverse, surely you've heard of that. No, not meta Facebook. I mean the real metaverse. Okay, okay, that's all right. Let me show you. Welcome to the forest of crypto, a world where you can turn $1,000 into $10,000, back into $1,000, all in a day's work. A space where you can make a living, and a very comfy living at that, buying, selling, or what we in the business call flipping monkey JPEG images or a place where you can invest in tantalizing financial products like sushi swap, pancake swap, or maple finance. Oh, and of course, there's Dogecoin. You know, if you'd bought $1,000 of Dogecoin at the beginning of last year, you'd have made 121,000 US dollars only five months later. Pretty crazy, right? Nah, you see, if instead you had bought a coin called SHIB, short for Shiba Inu, you'd be a multi-millionaire only one year later. And that's the industry. But mind you, it's not all dog coins and food finance here. This place is filled by the likes of cypherpunks, OG vanguards of privacy. There's devs, builders, miners, entrepreneurs, speculators, artists, and perhaps most importantly, refugees. Whether it be those sick of an inherently rigged system or only the rich get richer, or ones who simply don't have a choice, those in Venezuela, Argentina, or Zimbabwe, where Bitcoin moving 5% a day is nothing when inflation is hundreds of percent in a week. And that's where we are today, the Bitcoin tree. Now, you're probably wondering why it's tree. Well, you see, blocks in a blockchain are actually special data structures called Merkle trees. They're great for cryptographically securing and verifying information. And to do so is simple. You just find the Merkle root, you climb up the tree branches, and you reach the information leaf node at the top. Super efficient, and best part of all, it's all public. That's why that myth that crypto is only used by criminals is just plainly wrong. Only 0.34% of crypto transactions are used for illicit purposes. I mean, if you want to be dodgy, why use something that is both public and traceable? Go use cash and launder your money with HSBC or Deutsche Bank. Don't know what I'm talking about? Go read the Panama Papers. And that's the difference. Trees, unlike banks, are living, breathing records. They're the timekeepers of the forest. Everything around them, from the climate, the temperature, the humidity, fires, injuries, even the soil's nutritional content is recorded in its tree rings. And here for the Bitcoin tree, we see on its trunk 13 rings signaling 13 years of life. And it's growing in real time. By the end of my talk, a new block would have been mined, recorded, and chained to the other blocks. Get it? Block chain. And once chained, it is forever. We call this immutability. Anyone can read the transparent data that sits on chain. And each ring is rich with its own stories. But perhaps the story that comes up time and time again is that crypto is a bubble. Well, yeah, there's speculation, but how many times has crypto died, according to the media, yet reliably resurrected itself every four years to make complete new all-time highs and capturing millions more in adopters? No, it's not a bubble. It's more a bubble-producing tech paradigm subject to hype cycles. I mean, would you call the railroad a bubble? or the internet a bubble? You see, 
crypto is really just the next step in technology. And that's what our second largest tree, the Ethereum tree, is all about. Think of it like the internet's own decentralized native computer, allowing anyone to build, stack, and combine things like digital Lego, decentralized finance to become your own bank, NFTs as digital collectibles, video game items you can truly own, decentralized governance structures like DAOs, or just having your own self-sovereign identity. But Let's just focus on uh, something simple, you know, like payments. Payments are pretty convenient today. You can just swipe or tap your phone as long as you pay a 1% fee. But what if we want to send money to a relative in, say, Venezuela? Okay, we pay an inflated Forex fee. But hang on, they don't have a bank account, let alone one that can process Aussie dollars. Because like the other 1.7 billion people in the world, they are unbanked. Or what about sending money to a friend in the Ukraine? Can you trust that they will safely and quickly receive their money in a war zone? Yeah, nah. Okay, so instead, let's try one of these blockchains. Here's one, the Solana tree. Three steps. One, go to the website. Two, create a wallet. Three, get a private seed phrase, password, and public address. Done. Give me a public address, and I can send whatever amount in 10 seconds at a cost of a thousandth of a cent. Right now, in fact. Not bad, right? Now, what happens when you go and plant that seed you just got? Well, if you water it, nurture it and care for it, it will grow and flourish. If you just leave it, it will simply ebb with the rhythms of the forest. But if you feed it fraudulent products, it will wither and die. Because you own it, it's your responsibility. You see, Web 1 was read only, where we just consumed information. Web 2 was read write, where Centralized tech companies made content creation possible, but in exchange for giving up our data. But Web3 is read-write-own, where instead of creating on rented land, you build on your own. And that's really what the true innovation for something like the metaverse and crypto is. The crazy VR worlds, that's almost a distraction. No, Web3 is about an internet of ownership. For example, Something we use every day right now. Social media, right? Our networks, conversations, and profiles, they're all fractured as these large tech companies harvest and sell our data. And when a platform does something we don't like, say censorship, we find it hard to leave because our identity is tied to that platform. Now imagine instead your identity is on a blockchain. You can simply uproot your network and move to another platform. Your network belongs to you. Remember, you planted your own seed, grew your own tree, and now bear your own fruits. You can sell them and get compensated, but it's a choice rather than a requirement of use. That is how social networks should be. But to get there is the task we face now. As you might have heard, recently the forest got too big too fast. Many protocols and NFTs were decentralized in name only. Fraudsters disguised as YouTube influencers came in droves, preying on the vulnerability of newcomers. Thieves and hackers stole 7.7 .7 billion in 2021 alone. And of course, corporate institutions showed up, rolling in on their giant machines, chopping, logging, and extracting the value for themselves, influencing so many in the space until they lost sight of their original vision. Drunk on the riches of finally joining the very elite they had sought to topple. Until, finally, one tree, the Terra Luna tree, fell by its own founder's hubris. Greed saw monetization overtake organic growth, leading to what we call the Great Forest Fire of 2022. 
Luna fell from $80 to zero in a week. Crypto lending platforms went bankrupt. Hedge funds and traders liquidated. Trillions of market cap wiped out. But you know the worst bit? It was the little guys, the ones who came into the forest, wide-eyed and hopeful that maybe this place was different. The lucky ones came prepared with ways to protect themselves, but others didn't even come with a flashlight. Forced to stumble around in the darkness, left to be guided only by false prophets. And so we enter crypto winter. So, what happens next? Well, luckily, many of these trees are pyrophytic, meaning fire regenerates them. Remember, Bitcoin grew as a single seed from the ashes of the global financial crisis. This will only be a scar on its 14th tree ring. Likewise, Ethereum and other trees are still standing, if a little battered. That being said, the forest still needs guardians. We're too big now to go unpoliced. While this will add friction, we can trade off some wild untamed growth in exchange for stability. Lots has already been done. The idea that this place is a lawless wild west is a myth. While the forest may be dark, of course laws apply. They have never not applied. This is still society. We're all still human here. And so the same investor protection rules should apply, including things like transparency, auditing, solvency. But does that mean we simply give up and become regulated banks? Many of these problems can be solved without losing our original vision. And they are, right now. Put simply, it's not about no regulation, but the right regulation. You see, all speculation begins with a spark, as underneath all the crazy irrationalities is a thread of logic, a hope that maybe, just maybe, there is something bigger at play here. A chance for a better, more equal world. Think about how young this space is. The risk to reward is there. Plant your seeds now and you will reap the rewards. Go down the rabbit hole. Good luck and I'll see you on the other side.